The SEHD Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF is designed to track the performance of the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index. This index includes 100 high dividend yielding U.S. stocks that have a consistent history of paying dividends. The ETF's objective is to provide investors with a diversified portfolio of U.S. stocks that pay consistent dividends and that also have a history of raising their dividends over time. In this video, I want to talk about SEHD's actual holdings and how a lot of you guys might not know exactly what some of the largest and smallest holdings of the ETF really are. I personally own around 200 shares or so of SEHD as of right now, and I'm going to continue to stack more and more shares as time goes on. My longer term goal would to be to have around 1,000 shares plus of SEHD throughout my multiple dividend portfolios. This dividend paying ETF is one of my favorites, pretty much along with most of the dividend community. The reason it's my favorite is because it does have a good starting yield of around 3.5%, and on top of that, the dividend growth rate is insane. Historically, the fund grows their dividend around 13, 14, 15% per year, which is undoubtedly one of the highest dividend growth rates for an ETF that I've came across. Over time, as I've purchased more and more shares of SEHD, it's became more and more important to understand the fund, how it works, what the strategy is, and most importantly, what are the holdings of the strategy, and how does Schwab choose which stocks will be in the fund, and how are they all weighted? The process of SEHD picking and reconstituting the holdings in the SEHD ETF happens on a yearly basis, and it involves several steps. So first, let me explain what reconstitution means. So reconstitution involves the re-evaluation of a market index. The process involves sorting, adding, and removing stocks to ensure that the index reflects up-to-date market capitalization and style. Reconstitution is done to make sure indexes are appropriately balanced. The style of the index depends on how often it's rebalanced. This can be anything from once a day to every quarter or even every year. The same practice is put into effect by portfolio managers whose portfolio is their index. Rebalancing done through an index has the potential to change investor sentiment regarding individual stocks based on how they are rebalanced. So over time, different stocks, different names are going to be weighted differently. As time goes on, the portfolio manager is going to choose which stocks are going to be the largest makeup of the portfolio and which stocks are going to make up the least of the portfolio. So going back to SEHD and how they choose and reconstitute their holdings. The first step is to identify eligible stocks that meet the criteria for inclusion in the index. These criteria include a minimum market capitalization of 500 million, a minimum trading volume of 200,000 shares per day, and a dividend yield of at least 10% higher than the five-year average year of the S&P 500. The second thing that has to happen is ranking. Once the eligible stocks have been identified, they are ranked by dividend yield. The top 100 stocks with the highest dividend yield are selected for inclusion in the index. Number three is weighting. Each stock's weight in the index is determined by market capitalization and dividend yield. The higher the dividend yield and market capitalization of the stock, the higher its weighting is going to be on the index. And number four, rebalancing. Once the index is established, it's rebalanced on a yearly basis. This means that stocks that no longer meet the eligibility criteria would be removed from the index and that new stocks that meet the criteria would be added. So over time, you're going to see different names pop in, pop out, and move up and down in the percentage of assets that they hold because different stocks are going to be purchased and sold over time. SEHD is going to be rebalanced over time to ensure that each stock's weight remains proportional to its market capitalization and to the dividend yield because that's the strategy SEHD is going for. Next, what's kind of cool is to look through the actual holdings of SEHD and see which holdings make up the most and the least of this ETF. So right now, SEHD as of March 13th, March 14th, have 103 holdings, 46.8 billion in total assets, and of course, expense ratio is 0.06%. SEHD's top holding, which might shock a lot of you guys, is Broadcom Inc. This is 5.1% of the portfolio weight as of now, 3.7 million shares, a market value of 2.3 billion. Cisco is number two, Texas Instruments number three, Lockheed Martin number four, and Verizon now is number five. So again, over time, these are going to shift around. And depending on the rebalancing, you might see some of these names move up and down in this list. But overall, generally speaking, a lot of these names have been in the top 10 over the past several years. As you go down the list, you see that most of these names make up of 4%, 3%, 2%, and then most of the names actually make up of less than 1%. So the portfolio is quite diversified. 
What's also interesting is that a lot of these companies, and I want you guys to tell me down below what you think, but a lot of these companies I haven't even heard of. But it is kind of crazy that SCHD is as popular as it is, with a lot of us not even necessarily knowing the ins and outs, most of the names that make up SCHD. If we go to page two, these companies make up very, very small amounts of SCHD, but they still are a part of the portfolio. What I also find interesting and what I love about SCHD is that a lot of these names might have a very high starting dividend yield, and a lot of them might have a very low starting dividend yield. The companies that have a very high starting dividend yield might not grow their dividends as fast, but the companies in this portfolio that have a lower starting dividend yield are mostly companies that raise their dividend very, very quickly which gives SCHD a perfect balance in my opinion, with a decent starting yield of around 3.5% more or less as of right now. And again, that starting yield will go up and will go down depending on where the share price is at. But also it's made up of lots of different stocks that will raise their dividend quickly, which gives SCHD that dividend growth potential. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to please drop a like in the video and subscribe for more. Thanks as always and I'll see you in the next one.